my neighbor sent me. I'm not sure how he got it. But, uh, it went. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird how uh, quickly it went away. You know, <laughs> it was like, you know, inching up, inching up, and then all of a sudden it went, and then it was like, like five minutes later, it was, you know, quite a bit away. Anyway, all right, let's see here. Um, close that. Yeah, close that. Today, tip and items for homework. Okay, let's take a look at. It. I gotta admit to you guys, I did not do chapter, uh, did not do problem nine. <clears throat> I should have. Okay, so number nine. So we're gonna kind of use the same thing we did up here, looking at the relevant costs. Costs a little change between the alternatives. So the the alternative is to not do anything or to buy the new scanner. So we're just gonna focus on the new scanner. Okay, uh, the cost of the new scanner is. Twenty thousand. Have that up here. Oops. Oh, okay. All right. So the custom scanner was one hundred twenty thousand uh, negative, right? We're paying it out. Wrong place. Okay, now the operating costs. How much are the operating cost savings per year? Uh, I'll just subtract them. So where it costs fifty five thousand to operate the old scanner, the new scanner for whatever reason costs only fifteen thousand. So we're going to have um, forty thousand dollars savings. Uh, I'm not going to put savings in here. And this is per year. Could be a better way for me to do this. Okay, so I'm just gonna bold it. So forty thousand dollar savings per year. And we're going to do that for five years. All right, so it's $40,000 per year. times five years that's not high school years by the way equals two hundred thousand okay uh what there's one other cost we need to take into account and what is it for one other dollar amount i should say Give you a choice is between this one and the current value. So this is the cost we originally paid for it. it. Doesn't say when we paid for it, but sometimes in the past we paid for it. 
And then this is the current value of the new, of the old machine uh, scanner, I guess it is. Um, so this is what we could sell it for today. Which one of those two are we going to want to take into our calculations? Yep. This is a historical cost. Uh, this 140 is a historical cost. This is not relevant. We can't jump in the time machine and go change it. So this one, the, the original price we paid for the old scanner is not relevant. The current value is relevant. Okay, the uh, current value is 38,000. So if we buy the new machine, uh, the new scanner, we should be able to sell the old one for 38,000. And this will give us our overall savings. Uh, what is it? 100 See, 118,000. You want to check that? <clears throat> Push on that. And again, you know, it. Uh, you could run into people who argue, like, well, you know, we can still use that scanner for another five years. It's working fine. Why are we getting rid of it? And you're getting rid of it because it's actually going to cost you 118000 to keep it. That's basically how it works out. So um, replacement decisions, again, it goes back to kind of the, which I think is down here. You know the sunk costs that you know the, the yeah you paid one hundred forty thousand for it, it doesn't matter and it's hard for people to take you know <laughs> you paid one hundred forty thousand for it what do you mean it doesn't matter but yeah it doesn't matter okay <clears throat> let's go to uh, elimination I think it's last. One is the elimination. Yeah. Elimination of an unprofitable segment. Okay, so this is often comes actually this came this comes up in this comment. I'm actually on a um on a committee that's looking at different colleges in the school. And one of the things they look at are ones that are unprofitable. You gotta be really careful with that because ones that may look like they're unprofitable may be quite profitable and, and might be necessary for ones that are. I'll give you an example. The, the business uh, school, Heller uh, College of Business. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, your problem, but I, I, I knocked over a lava lamp. It's funny, way I, I got my in laws gave me a lava lamp, it's a joke. And I said, Oh, I remember my sister had one of those, and you know, I knocked it over and broke glass, and then you know, cut her foot, and all this stuff. I did the same thing, I just, I just knocked it over today, you know. So, anyway, um, no, but anyway, at the school here, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm on this committee, and we're looking at things that are unprofitable, and I'm kind of glad I'm on the committee because the reports that they give make uh, some. Colleges look very unprofitable and some look very well. I'll give you an example, business department. The business department looks very profitable. You know, like it's making millions, you know, you're printing money. But the fact of the matter is a lot of, of classes that students take are not in the business department. They're gen ed, they're English, math, all that kind of stuff. So we actually have a lot of other departments that are picking up some of the costs of our students and that is not reflected in these reports. 
for example, the English department, students take English class to go into another college of business. Okay, it, it's not reciprocal. You know, the English department has English students. English students don't take accounting. You know, so there is, it is that they're teaching our classes and they're getting nothing back for it. And so you gotta be careful with that. And, you know, you may look at it and say, well, let's eliminate the English department. Well, you do that, you're gonna eliminate, you know, <laughs> the a big chunk of the Heller College of Business, you know, so you got to be really careful on how you do these, these things. So eliminating a department is, or an unprofitable segment of business is, it can be kind of sticky. And I'll show you one of the, um, one of the things that is uh, the trickiest here is our allocated costs. Allocated costs are costs that are simply applied to a division. Uh, for instance, uh, we have a, a accounting department at the school, we have human resources and all that kind of stuff. And those costs get allocated to departments. Now, if you eliminate the department, that doesn't mean the accounting department disappears. The accounting department is still there. Those allocated costs just have to be allocated to somebody else. So, one of the things that we, I'm gonna be care, I gotta be careful how I say this, but the uh, unavoidable, I'll give you a new, a new rule. Unavoidable allocated costs are not relevant. Okay. So they tell us if the bullet hat division is closed on 35,000 of the fixed overhead costs would have to be allocated to another division. Okay, so I, I think I'm gonna, actually, I think I'm gonna get away from what I have down here. Well, maybe I can copy it, let me see. Can you copy this in or not? Bah, okay, that doesn't work. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this a little bit. Okay, so here's what they're talking about, this fixed overhead. The fixed overhead is really two different things. There is the um, Fixed overhead avoidable, which is the fifteen thousand of the fifty thousand, and the fixed overhead allocated, which is unavoidable. And that's going to be the other, because so of 35,000 they're talking about. I'll clean this up in a second. Okay, so it's sort of like the, oops. Clean this up. So this fixed overhead unav uh, unavoidable, this is not relevant. So 
So for our decision, it should look like this. No, these are all the same. And we are going to do the fixed overhead, the avoidable amount that they said. Uh, so 35,000 was not avoidable, but that means that 15,000 of it is. So, the, you know, for instance, rent on the place or whatever they're having. So this 15,000 will be avoidable. Uh, the fixed overhead, so this would not be relevant to the decision. All right, uh, the chicken out profitable, I think. Let's see. What is that, 80, 95, 15, positive 15,000. So this is the number that we should be looking at. Uh, it's, it's actually profitable. So sh should they be closed? No. How much additional income will be realized by closing the HANT division? Uh, nothing. You'll be losing So it's actually profitable. If you close it, you're closing a profitable line. So we should not close the bowler hat division. So allocated costs are not, um, are not relevant. So for our decision, now there's nothing wrong with having it in a department um, you know, measure of income because these costs do get allocated. However, they're not relevant to a decision. You know, they're making $15,000 towards, you know, putting it towards uh, the company in general. They may want it to be more than that. They want to maybe make it at least cover the thirty-five thousand that's allocated. But the fact of the matter is, they are making fifteen thousand for the company. And if you eliminate that division, you will be losing fifteen thousand of income. <clears throat> and by the way, you know, like I say, me being on that committee is is actually good because it's like. Uh, <laughs> you think that like okay it's my my department looks really profitable uh you know let's rub their noses in it but the fact of the matter is one of the reasons why our department looks profitable is that we have 
other people picking up some of those costs. And if we have to pick up those costs ourselves, is we're not nearly as profitable as we appear on paper. Okay. This one is commonly what you'll see as far as a um, allocation problem. They give you different divisions that have allocated costs. Oops. I'll leave it like that. Um, and then they say, okay, if the home, you know, if one, of them, if one of them is eliminated, what will happen to the total costs? All right, so we got our, we got three divisions here. And you know, we look at the home model one, and this one looks like it's unprofitable. So you may have someone say, hey, let's get rid of this uh, home model and you know, we'll be $10,000 better off. The problem is, is that these are allocated costs, that there is a total of, looks funny, of 75,000 of this is allocated between the three divisions. And allocated costs, while they do, um, it, it, it is taking the overhead, you know, the cost of the running the place and uh, assigning it to different departments for determining whether you should have, keep a division open, um, it's not relevant. And so here's what would happen. Just kind of, and this is kind of just drives it home. Okay, so we have twenty five thousand of the home model, and we're going to eliminate this home model. We're going to eliminate this line, so this all goes away. The allocated costs do not go away. So we're going to have to allocate 20,000 between these two. And I'm just going to kind of do it arbitrarily. Uh, well, okay, we have to give 25,000. How much do we give to model the sport model? There's no right or wrong. You just, as long as it's less, 25,000 or less, uh, how much are we going to give to the sports model? 10,000. Excellent. I was going to put that in, actually. So let's give 10,000 to... I don't have the dollar. I don't have to do it in dollars. Let me... And that would mean the uh, travel model would have to pick up the other 15,000. All right, so let's calculate their income here. All right, 140. So this will make ten thousand dollars now. And the travel model. equals 15,000. So their total income will drop from 40,000 down to 25,000. Uh, this is an unhappy coincidence that those two are the same.
But you can kind of see though why you know why you got to pay attention to this stuff because you know it might look like you're going to be saving ten thousand dollars by getting rid of this when actually you're going to be losing fifteen. And if we did this same calculation without the twenty five thousand, you know this would come out to be fifteen thousand plus. Again, maybe it's not as profitable as we want it to be, but it's actually making 15000 And you can kind of see that the difference between what we have up here when the division is open and versus what is down here. So should it be eliminated? No. How much additional income will be realized? And there'll be a loss of I mean the home model. It was fifteen thousand income. Uh, let me put this back the way it was. So you know, it looks like it's losing. Ten thousand dollars. It's actually making fifteen thousand. Maybe you want it to make more, but yeah, it's actually making fifteen thousand. So again, this is kind of this uh, allocated cost. And by the way, you know, this is why like in that committee I'm on. Um, you, you know. It's good to be, it's good to be an accountant in those situations because you realize that a lot of people, even though they're, maybe they're high up, they don't realize what you know what the mechanic with, with with the dollar mechanics that are going on here, and they may very well say, "Well, look, look it's losing money. We can't keep doing this. We're losing money every year," and you know, it very well could be that they're not losing money. And so sometimes it's good to have accounting people like myself in those areas not because we're so much smarter but because it's our line of business and you can say look no you know you're not going to save that much money you know if you if you if you get rid of the english department all of a sudden hella college business can become much more expensive to run you know it's because there's actually living up from some of our students um and by the way just to, to kind of close it a little bit what i'm going to probably start suggesting that they do is have a um what we call a transfer pricing is that they charge a certain amount for students that they teach, you know, cost plus a little bit of whatever it is. And um, in that way, they'll pick that up as a revenue and we'll pick that up as an extra cost. And it'll be more accurate as far as what it actually costs to um, run the place. Because if you just take the professors, we only have a handful of professors in the Hill College of Business, whereas, you know, they have a lot of, a lot of people in the um, gen ed, especially, that um, they teach a lot of classes without having any majors, without having the tuition and all that. So, anyway, uh, any questions on that? Yeah, being an accountant is actually a pretty good thing. <laughs> even if you even if you don't go into, even if you don't stay in accounting, um, you, you really do have an insight that other people just don't have. I think we're done. Then we'll just. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take your guys' names, I'm going to give you extra credit for it, um, and we're going to call it a week. This is a kind of a funny week, yeah. But we, we can turn in the chapter 11-1. Um, have, have you guys ever seen a, um, a red moon? 
it's it's, it's when there's a uh, eclipse of the moon and a few years ago I, I heard about it and i didn't really care and I, but anyway i was out walking the dogs and if you ever get a chance to see a red moon do it it was absolutely huge it took up a huge portion of the sky i don't know why but and it was orange red it was just a massive moon it was orange red and it all has to do with the optics of it uh, i guess red light is a longer wavelength than the other one so the other ones all disperse when it goes around the earth you know to the moon but the red ones are longer ones and i guess they zoom in so that you can actually see them so it's it's pretty neat it's got like looking through a filter but it's it's super intense so if you ever get a chance to see a red moon uh do it i was kind of surprised i thought oh who cares but um and again i was just off walking the dogs and they've done a million times and never, uh yeah it, yeah it, it, it's it's fun i i was completely shocked when i walked out the door and saw it i was like wow and then it actually ended not bad but um i had a camera that was kind of like made for idiots you know i was like okay they'll take good pictures even if you're stupid so i got this camera you know you just point it and you click and it does all the adjustments and all the stuff so i took a picture of it and i realized this thing's taking three pictures at a time and they're all it's all blurry because they overlap all these pictures and they even put it on a time right on a tripod and stuff trying to get a picture of this moon that I, you know, i've never seen in my life and uh and, and as i read through the thing on the camera you can't turn it off <laughs> so you know they had to pick, take three pictures at a time at night to get more light into the camera but it's almost impossible especially with a high definition camera to hold it so still that you're gonna get exactly the same three pictures even on a tripod um you know, so anyway, it, 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 I didn't get a picture of it. I got, I got, I got a picture of this one from my neighbor, but uh, the eclipse. But um, I wish I had a picture of that to show it to you. But it was, it was really worthwhile. It was, it was, it was fun. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, let's turn into chapter eleven. Uh, next week we'll have a practice exam for chapter eleven, and uh, we will start on. I'm not sure what we we'll start on next week. Oh, uh, time value of money stuff, making long-term decisions. I should have known that. I've taught this class a million times. So chapter 11 is for short-term decisions. Um, you know, do we buy this piece of equipment today? Do we close this thing today? We, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the next one we're going to look at are long-term decisions. Just which is the last, and that you're going to have to actually look at the time value of money uh, to do it. All right, any questions? Have a good day, and uh, I don't know if the eclipse is still on or not, but if, if it is, then go enjoy the rest of the eclipse. All right, see you guys. Bye-bye. I don't think.